Hey guys and welcome back to another tasty blender tutorial. Yes, today I'll be showing you how to make pendulums. We'll take a look at a couple of methods that you can use. So it's going to be rigid body, cloth and actual keyframe animation. I'll be doing just the animation part, but if you're interested in material workflows or rendering and lighting, I'll just append a couple of videos in the description that you are more than welcome to check out. I'll be offering a free, completely free uh, source file with this tutorial, so you're more than welcome to download it. In any case, let's go into it. So I'm going to open up Blender 2.92. So this is my start scene. I'm just going to delete everything in the scene. You can also see the shortcuts in the bottom left corner. Now, first of all, I need to set up my pendulum and it's going to be fairly easy. I'm just going to add a UV sphere edit mode. I'm going to choose all of these vertices on top and I'm just going to go out, press E to extrude and drag it up. You have this small point over here. You can iron it out by pressing S and then Z and just scaling it to zero. If you want to make 100% sure, you can open this menu and just drop the value to zero. That's going to flatten out your top right there. So the first animation we'll be doing is by using keyframes. And if I rotate it on the Y axis, you can see that it's rotating around the sphere. Now, this is not what we want. We want it to rotate from up here, from the top of the stem. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to move the cursor to the selected. So this is the selection that I have. This means it's going to move the cursor to the group of vertices that you have selected. And I'm going to exit edit mode and press shift control alt C origin to 3D cursor. This means that the origin of the object rotation, location, scaling is set at that point. So if I rotate it on the Y, you can see now it rotates perfectly just going to press control a to reset the scale just in case even though we don't need it for keyframes and i'm going to rotate it on the y to be at 90 degrees press i and insert a rotation keyframe and now i can start animating so i'm going to move 50 frames ahead rotate it by 90 degrees downwards i rotation and then again 100 frames rotate 90 degrees i rotation and now i can repeat the process so it returns back or i can just select the previous keyframe press ctrl c move to frame 150 ctrl v and then click on the first frame ctrl c move 50 frames ahead ctrl v and basically it loops my animation you can see this isn't very realistic because we need to do a bit of fine tuning. So I'm going to divide my screen and choose the graph editor. Now you can see that this graph is too big to work with like that. So that's why I press normalize so I can see all of the curves perfectly. And I can just click on this drop down menu and I have my X, Y and Z rotation. But I don't need the X and I don't need the Z. So I'm just going to press the I icon, which hides all of the frames that I don't need. Now I can start with this pendulum animation. First of all, I think it's a bit too slow. And if I want to make it quicker, I can just go to the first frame, leave my mouse hovering on the timeline, press A to select all of the keyframes and then S and scale down the keyframes. Let's say to frame 90. Now, if I start it, you can see that the animation is much, much quicker, right? Let me just pull the duration of the animation to 90. So it loops and we can see it a bit better. Last thing I want to show you is how to make this just a bit more realistic, even though in real life, in real physics, there would be a bit of loss of force. But in this case, we want to make it a perfect little loop. So what I want to do is add some interpolation and you do that by pressing T. And then you have all of these selections right here. In our case, I want to go with the either quadratic or cubic, but let me set the quadratic right now. So what I want to achieve is this part to be faster in descent. So I want, I want it to fall faster and then slow down when it rises up. And you can see it sort of does that, but it's a bit of a weird pendulum. So I just need to make a few adjustments. So this curve right here, I like it, but I want this one to be turned around. And I can do that by just choosing both of these points. So this one and this one, control E, ease out. So now if I press play, you can see that it goes very fast to the bottom and then it hits it on the other side. But the other side is still a bit wonky. So I want to correct that, press control E, ease in, and then control E, ease out. So I have this nice little curve. 
And you can see it behaves a bit more correctly right now, right? So it accelerates when it falls down and slows down when it reaches the other side. One final tip for this is to actually end the keyframes at 89. And this is going to create a more fluid motion because the last keyframe at 90 is the same as the first one. So basically you are doubling one single frame and that usually creates that sort of a split second stopping effect. You can get rid of that by just putting it at 89 and that's going to create a nice little perfect loop. So yeah, that's it for keyframed animation. But how do we make this a bit more interesting in terms of physics? Well, let me close this window and I'm just going to move to the first frame again, choose my object, shift D to duplicate it, X, so I can move it nicely onto this side. And I'm just going to delete all of the keyframes by pressing A and then X. So this deleted my animation. I don't need it anymore, so I can start setting it to be a rigid body animation. Physics is very simple. We just need sort of a circular hinge. I'm gonna do it very quickly. Just control R. Let me put a loop cut right there. And now I'm gonna press cursor to select it. So it moves it here. Press A, mesh cylinder. So I can add another cylinder and I'm just gonna scale it down, rotate it on the X and then move it on the X backwards. So I just wanna see in wireframe by pressing Z where I am. I want this to be sort of in the middle between those two cuts like that. I think the width is good enough. I'm just gonna scale it on the Y like that. Perfect. So let me choose the pendulum now and I'm gonna add a Boolean. And this Boolean, I can choose the eyedropper and just choose the cylinder. I can just control A, apply that modifier. And now if I hide my cylinder, you can see how it cut it. Now, this would usually need a bit of prep. You can find a bunch of very useful tutorials on that, on how to carve out perfect circles. For now, this is gonna be good enough just to demonstrate the concept. So I'm gonna choose my initial cylinder and I'm just gonna resize it on the Z and X axis. And I do that by pressing S, Shift, Y. And that way I'm just scaling the Z and the X. And I wanna make them just slightly smaller. Control A to reset the scale of both objects. And with my pendulum selected, I can press A twice. Control N to reset the normals. So everything works correctly. So let me select the first hinge again. I'm gonna go into my physics settings, which is this planet type of icon here, rigid body. And this is gonna be a passive rigid body. It means that it's not gonna move and it's not gonna be animated, but it will have rigid body properties. I'm gonna leave it at convex hole. So this means that this is the actual mesh that it's gonna use for this surface response. And I can drop the friction to 0.1. Now for my pendulum, I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna leave it at active and change it to mesh, meaning it's also taking into account the hole that we've cut in. So friction to 0.1 and sensitivity, I can just drop it to 0.0006, let's say. Now I can press play, but there's something very strange happening. The pendulum is going upwards and this shouldn't be happening actually. <laughs> well, it's very simple. It's because we have the origin at the top of the stem. So let me press shift control alt C origin to geometry and this is going to switch the origin point so now the center of mass is here but we want it in the sphere now we can repeat the same step we did in the beginning so i'm just going to go into my edit mode wireframe and i'm just going to choose the sphere part press shift s cursor to select it shift control alt c when you're in your object view and origin to 3d cursor and it's going to move the 3d cursor to the sphere like that. So now the center of mass is in the sphere. And you can see it's moving perfectly. But again, it's still a bit too slow. So I wanna speed this up. So I can go into my object properties right here and you see this rigid body and this speed setting. Now, if I chuck it, let's say to six, bam, you can see the movement of the pendulum much, much faster. And it's much more realistic, which is perfect. Just to have a bit of fun, we can actually add like a rigid body simulation to this one. So let me go into my physics properties, add a rigid body. When I add the active, you can see that it just falls down. So it needs to be either a passive or it's an animated, meaning that it's animated, but the physics properties actually coexist. I Like this is, I'm just messing around. Obviously it's not gonna be stable, but it's just a fun trick that you can use 
you know, by yourself. Let me just take away that rigid body so everything functions properly. Beautiful. So we have these two pendulums right now. You can see both of them in action. Let me just move this one in front. So the last one that I want to show you is using cloth. Now, this is a bit more unrealistic slash realistic. It's kind of a weird in between, but again, it's fun enough to try. So let me again move to the first frame and let me duplicate the first pendulum that I've created like that. Now, I want to go into edit mode and I want to do a couple of things. I want to create a couple of groups. So I'm going to go into my object data properties and I'm going to add the first group to be this stem. So I'm going to assign it and rename it to stem. And then I'm going to add another group. But in this case, I'm going to choose the inverse. I can press control I, which is going to invert my selection. And this is going to be this part of the sphere. So this one is going to be sphere. So I have my stem, I have my sphere. Now let me go into my cloth. So I'm gonna go physics settings, cloth. And now if I press play, my cloth is just very sadly falls down. Let me just delete also the keyframes. So we have like a nice clean object. Now I can start setting it up. So I wanna go under shape, click on the pin group and choose the stem, which means it's going to hold my object by its stem. You see it's not performing very well we can also drop the stiffness but still it's not behaving like an object that's like a pendulum another thing i want to do is open the pressure and in the pressure i want to set it to sphere now look at what happens when i increase the pressure just the sphere part and just a bit of this one blows up i want to make a couple of changes here and namely i want to go into edit mode and add a few loop cuts let's say 20 30 are going to be enough let me try this and you can see that the flexibility has improved a lot so this is a bit more tricky and also your let's say origin point is going to be there it's going to be just stuck there you can also do another thing to make it just a bit cleaner so i'm gonna rotate it to be at 90 degrees or something like that and i'm just gonna go and select this single vertex go back into my group i'm gonna delete the stem like that i'm gonna add another one assign that there so i'm gonna rename this one to be stem again assigned and i'm gonna return to my cloth shape stem let me play and you can see it holds just by that vertex, right? You can see that this is just intersecting with itself and we can correct that by going to collisions, self collisions and drop into a distance of about 0 0.006 should be enough. And again, maybe the movement is just a bit too slow. So I'm just going to go up speed multiplier and let me push it to six. Now, with this type of pendulum, it's a bit weirder. You can increase the vertex mass and get some really weird results, actually. Uh, increase the bending, which means it's trying to hold its shape a bit more. You can increase, let's say, the pressure again, so it's trying to keep itself more as a bowl rather as a piece of lemon. There's tons and tons of things. Shrinking factor is also a fun one if you make it like go into a minus one is just going to stretch out you can really go extreme or you can shrink it so it's going to you know be a bit more elastic so these are the three ways you can create a pendulum this is the animated the physically correct one and just one that it's fun to mess around so yeah, that's it. These are the three methods of animating or actually trying to animate a pendulum. Now, hopefully this will help you out. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment. I always appreciate those. And yep, I'll see you in the next one.